Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. Jordan's Banks, adapted for radio from a story by the distinguished American author Marquis James, starring Elliot Reed in the role of Sam Davis. DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, tonight brings you the story of a young Confederate soldier. His name, Sam Davis. In the role of Sam Davis, the Cavalcade of America presents Elliot Reed, talented young actor of radio and the theater, in an original radio drama, Jordan's Banks. The year 1863, Americans in blue and Americans in gray clashing over flaming principles and ideas. For the Southern cause, there's a band of spies called Coleman Scouts operating behind the Union lines in Tennessee. And one moonlight night, they are gathered in a forest northwest of Nashville. Davis reporting, Captain Coleman. Very well, Davis. Have much trouble getting here? No, sir. Pretty lucky tonight. See any Yankee patrols? <laughs> Plenty. But they didn't see me. Good. Now, men, we're all here. Listen carefully. We haven't much time to talk. I've got to report to General Lee in Richmond. But before I go, we've got to get these plans of Nashville's fortifications to General Bragg in Chattanooga. He needs them to recapture Nashville from the Yanks. Good, sir. One of us will have to take these papers and all the responsibility... There must be no evidence against the rest of us. If the Yankees catch him, he will assume this duty alone. Is that clear? We understand. Who is to do it, Captain? Davis. Yes, sir? No, Captain, no. He's too young, not Davis. I'm in this as much as you all are. Davis? Yes, sir? You live around here, don't you? My father's farm isn't far from here, sir. Davis, I, I want to have a word with you. Davis, before the war... I was a doctor. My name wasn't Coleman then. I was Dr. Shaw. What I'm asking you to do means you'll have to risk your life. It's been my business to save lives. But, Davis, it's more than your life or my life. It's the lives of thousands of men. If our plan succeeds, it means victory and the end of the war. I know, sir. This may be our last meeting... I hope our next will be in peace. But in any case, Captain Coleman no longer exists. From now on, I'm Dr. Shaw. Remember that, Davis. I will, sir. All right, Davis. Hear the papers? God bless you, lad. Sam, what are you doing here this hour of the night? The Yanks, they crowded me pretty close. So I took a chance, the only chance, and came home. You think they saw you? I can't be sure. The patrols are everywhere. Andrew? Andrew? It's your mother. Uh, yes, Ellen? I thought I heard voices. Sam. Mom. Sam, why are you in that Yankee uniform? Well, I had to come through some of their territory, Mom. They like blue better than gray. And you haven't any boots, Sam. Well, I had to leave them by a creek back yonder, Mom, when I heard some Yankees coming. Didn't have time to put them on. You better take a pair of mine, son. I'll have to hurry, Father. Stay and rest here, Sam. I can't, Mother. I I've got to go. Listen. It's a Yankee patrol. Quick, put out the lamp. <sighs> That's it. You see anything out the window, Sam? Yes. They're Yanks, all right. But they're riding towards the ridge. Yeah. 
That makes you safe here, Sam. Maybe. But they might come back. I don't think so, son. Yeah, I reckon it'll be some time before it'll be safe outside. Here, Sam. Rest yourself on the couch. I'll fetch the boots, son. Think they'll fit me? Might be a little big, son. I'm awfully glad you could get home, Sam. Here, lean your head down on my shoulder. Oh, Mom. You'd treat me just like I was still a kid. <laughs> you always will be a little boy to me, Sam. You look just like you used to when you get so tired from playing out back of the barn you couldn't eat. And I had to put you to bed without your supper. A long time ago, wasn't it, Mom? Mm. Mom. Yes, Sam? Don't... Don't let me sleep too long, will you? No, no, I won't, Sam. Here. Here, let me put this blanket over you. Mm. There. There you are now. Mom, it's funny. That song sort of carries you back. Mind you, things. Yes. Yes, Sam. Go to sleep now. On your blue stormy banks I stand And cast a whisper I To Come on, Prince. Come on, boy. Hey, you! Hold there! Whoa, Prince. Oh, boy. Well, sure a good sight. Seeing a union officer. Who are you and where do you belong? Private Adams, sir. 39th Ohio Volunteers. I'm afraid I lost my regiment. <laughs> you hear that, boys? Little Bo Peep's lost. Why don't you get a compass? All right, quiet, men. Adams, let's see your papers. I, uh, I don't have them with me, sir. You see, I lost them. Lost them? Yeah, I, I couldn't help it. But I can tell you anything you want to know. Uh, who's your captain? Captain Charles Evans, sir. He's from our home county in Ohio. Ohio, eh? You sound a little southern to me. Well, I used to live over in Kentucky until Pa and Ma moved up to Ohio. That was on account of the way things were going down south. All right, come on, Sergeant. Let him go. He ain't one of them we're looking for. Well, all right. Watch out, Adams. A lot of Johnny Reds loose around here. I'll be careful, sir. Oh, sir, could you direct me to my regiment? I can't tell you where the 39th Ohio is, but at the next fork, bear left. You'll come to Union forces. They'll probably be able to tell you. Oh, goodbye, sir. Thanks very much. Good luck. Come on, Prince. Let's go, boy. Oh, Prince. Howdy, miss. Go on about your business, Yankee. What's the matter with the buggy? Yeah, wait a minute. Don't you go getting off that horse. I'll have no truck with the likes of you. Trace broke, eh? <laughs> I reckon you almost had a runaway. I'll fix it. Never you mind. Oh, you won't fix it if you tie it that way. Here, I'll do it. Don't you dare touch me. Oh, I'm sorry. But I can't fix it, you know, if you're going to stand there. I declare I'd rather walk than... Take help from a Yankee. There. there we are. That's it. Won't break now. Looks better, don't it? I, I told Paul a million times we ought to have a new harness. Something's always the matter with it. Do you uh, live around here? We got a farm back of those woods over yonder. But the trace is fixed up real nice, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll get home all right. Reckon I will. You can go on up ahead and join your Yankees. Oh, uh, did you see a patrol going down the road? Why, yes, I did. Don't you belong to it? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I just uh, wondered where they were. Thanks. 
for fixing the trees. What's your name? Name? Oh, it's... Uh... Well, does it make any difference? I'm just that Yankee you don't like, remember? <laughs> well, I... Gotta be on my way now. Goodbye. Goodbye, Yankee. Come on, Prince. Come on. Come on, boy. Goodbye. Goodbye. <sighs> Quiet, Prince. Easy now. Shh. Yes. Quiet. Oh! Shh. Prince. Pick up or I'll plug it. Next shot will go through you. Stand by, men. Be ready. Yes, sir. All right, get off that horse. Yes, sir. But uh, why are you doing this? Hold his horse, Corporal. Yes, Lieutenant. Oh. What's the trouble? I guess I hurt my foot, Lieutenant. All right, now. Say, those aren't regulation boots. What kind of an outfit you got on, anyway? What's your name? Private Hull, sir. 21st Illinois. 21st Illinois, huh? What town in Illinois? Why, uh... Springfield. Where do you live in Springfield? On 6th Street. Where'd you leave your regiment? Uh, uh, over Nashville Way. <laughs> that was before I got lost, sir. Yeah. Made a bad guess this time, Johnny. Fall in beside him, men. But, sir, I, I tell you, I'm lost. Too bad you didn't know the 21st Illinois is from a tune, not Springfield. Now, will you tell me who you are? No, sir. All right. It'll keep. Ford. Hutch. What's the matter? Why the limp? My feet hurt from these boots, sir. Uh, we'll fix that when we get to headquarters. Then we'll find out who you are. In here, Davis. All right, sir. A little crowded just now, but you won't mind. You won't be here long. I reckon not. Guess you'll find some of your old friends in here. Hey, you know any of these prisoners? No. No, I don't know any of them, sir. Oh. Hey, why don't you rebs wear boots to fit? Now, here's the man to help you, Davis. Which man? Well, this man over here, the doctor. The doctor Shaw. Yes, Sergeant? Come over here a minute, will you? What's the trouble? Now, this prisoner's got a bad limp from oversized boots. Have a look at him, will you? Of course. Better slip off his boots and I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Show the prisoner in, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. This way, Davis. Yes, sir. Hey, you're younger than I suppose, Davis. I reckon I'm older than you'd think, General Dodge. Tell me, son... Where was Coleman going when he gave you the papers we found on you? Well, I didn't say he gave them to me, sir. Oh, that won't do, son. You've got to tell us what Coleman's up to. He gave you those papers for one reason. Because he's off on a more important scheme. Where is Coleman? I have nothing to say, sir. You might as well tell me where Coleman's heading for. Bragg won't take Nashville. We've got those plans. Come on, son. You better tell me. I can't do that. Davis, it's the only way I can save you. I don't want to be saved that way, General. Is that all, Davis? Yes, sir. God, take the prisoner back to his cell. Prisoner. Answer the roll call. Private Blair. Yeah. Bryant. Yeah. Davis. Yeah. Donovan. Yeah. Miller. Yeah. Mitchell. Yeah. Parker. Yeah. Dr. Shaw. Yeah. At ease. You've got a few minutes to stretch your legs, prisoners. Dismiss. You give us the right chance, Sergeant, and we'll show you how we can stretch them. Yeah, you'd have a time keeping up with the others, Davis, with those feet of yours. 
Here, my boy. Let me look at him again. Oh, thank you, Dr. Shaw. Sergeant's right. I couldn't run far, I reckon. Let me know, Doctor, if there's any medicine you need. Or... Yes, Sergeant. Uh, let's slip off your boots, Davis. All right. uh, Still pretty bad. Hmm. Well, they're better, thanks to you, Doctor. I'll uh, take a closer look at them. God's watching us. Go right ahead, Doctor. I won't weaken. He's out of your shot now. I'm sorry I failed you, Captain. You did your best, Sam. But I'll find a way to get you out of this. No, Captain, no. It's got to be this way. They mustn't know who you are. You have more important things to do, Captain. You've got to escape. What about you, Sam? Oh, don't think about me, Captain. Remember what you said when you gave me the papers? The lives of thousands of men depend on your work. You've got to escape so you can carry out your plans. You've got to. Watch it. The guard. Time's almost up, prisoners. But I tell you, Sam... Quiet, quiet. He'll hear you. All right, now, all right. Fall in. Prisoners, in. Shoot. Sorry, Davis. Sorry if I hurt you. Sam, I've just come from General Dodge. Wants to be talk with you again. Captain Chickasaw, we've been over this so many times. It's useless to talk about it. Sam, have you thought about your mother and father? Yes. Yes, I have, sir. You see, they don't know anything about it. Oh. You could go back to them, Davis. You'd only see how useless this is. But I can't see that, sir. You know what I mean, Davis. I mean, we'll get Coleman. Not if I can help it. Davis, why do you compel us to hang you? Private Samuel Davis, 1st Tennessee Infantry. The sentence of this court-martial is that on Friday, November 27th, 1863, you be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may God have mercy on your soul. Davis, Chaplain Young to see you. Good morning, Sam. Morning, Chaplain. Is there anything you need, Sam? Anything I can do for you? No, thanks, Chaplain. I'll help you any way I can, Sam. There isn't much I can do, I know. Thanks, Chaplain. Sam, I'm not a soldier. Perhaps if I was, I might not be as helpless as I am. Oh, you needn't feel that way about it, sir. You've helped me. Have I, my boy? Well, it's not for me to urge you to have courage when I wonder how you have so much. It isn't only that, Chaplain. Sam, your life should be ahead of you because you're young and brave. Won't you tell them what they want to know? It's a small thing, isn't it? Chaplain, would you betray a trust? No, Sam, I wouldn't. I'm glad you said that to me. steps. How long, Captain Armstrong? Only a few minutes, Sam. Any... Any news of the fighting, Chaplain? General Bragg was defeated at Lookout Mountain. Oh, that's bad news. For us. All right, Private Stone. Yes, sir. You just stand over here, Sam. Well, Private Stone. Do we have to wait? Oh, I won't. I can't. I'm not going to spring that trap. Stone. Somebody else will have to. I won't. Do you oh, hear? Orders, Private Stone. Do you understand that? Let's get it over with. I, I can't wait. Someone's coming. I... Huh? What? Oh, oh, yeah, where is back he? there. He's waving at us. Looks like Captain Chickasaw. Yes, that's who it is. Just a minute, gentlemen. Captain Armstrong. Wait. Wait. What is it? 
Catch it, Captain. I've got to speak to the boy once more. Sam. Stand back, Sam. everyone. Stand back. Let Captain Sam talk through. Captain, let me talk to prisoner, please. Uh, go right ahead, Captain. Sam, General Dodge gives you one more chance. It's your last. If you'll tell us why Coleman can be found, you can walk off these gallows of free men. Well, uh, how long have I to consider this, sir? Only a couple of minutes. Have you a paper and pencil? Yes. Here you are, Sam. I hoped you would, Sam. I hoped you would. General Dodge will be happy about it, too. We all will. There, it's done. But, Captain, can I hand it to the chaplain? Why, yes, Sam, if you wish, but I don't... Chaplain, this is a note to my mother. Will you deliver it, please? Why, of course, Sam. Is that all, Sam? Yes. I'm ready now. Chaplain. What is it, Sam? Would you... Would you sing... Jordan's Banks for me. Very well, Sam. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wistful Prisoners, halt! Prisoners, attention! Answer the roll call. Private Blair, yeah. Bryant, yeah. Donovan, yeah. Miller, yeah. Mitchell, yeah. Parker, yeah. Dr. Shaw. Yeah. Climb board the train, prisoners, to take seats. Right, halt! Prisoners, line up. Ten, shoot. Answer the roll call. Private Blair. Yeah. Bryant. Yeah. Donovan. Yeah. Miller. Yeah. Mitchell. Yeah. Parker. Yeah. Dr. Shaw. Dr. Shaw. Dr. Shaw! The ideals for which Sam Davis gave up his life are principles of American character, loyalty to a promise, devotion to a cause, and unselfish and sacred honor. Principles that earned Sam Davis an honored place in the cavalcade of America. Thank you, Elliot Reed. And now before Dr. Monahan brings us news of next week's program... We have a story from the wonder world of chemistry. In the state of California, engineers are building one of the world's largest structures, the Shasta Dam. It will be higher than a 50-story skyscraper, and the work is being done under the direction of the United States Bureau of Reclamation. It's going to hold back the Sacramento River, forming a mighty reservoir to aid flood control, navigation and irrigation, and to make electric power. Through the canyons where the dam and reservoir will be runs a main line of the Southern Pacific Railroad, when the railroad was built 56 years ago, no one dreamed that someday the canyons would be filled with water hundreds of feet deep. Now, a new generation of builders has to remove 37 miles of the railroad and make a new and straighter route through the mountains. To do that, they have to bore 12 tunnels and build eight bridges. Now, these engineers would certainly testify that such jobs could not be tackled without the help of chemistry. DuPont and other companies supply the chemical product dynamite that conquers the obstacles of nature. One of the first operations at Shasta Dam was holding through a bypass tunnel to take trains away from the work on the main foundations of the dam. But this tunnel will be used only a couple of years until the permanent new railroad is finished. When the railroad is relocated, the tunnel will be turned into an enormous pipe to help carry the river away while the big dam is being built. And the railroad, running through 12 new tunnels made by men aided by dynamite, will be shorter and straighter than the old line and will save time for passengers and freight traveling up and down the Pacific coast. 
The Shasta Dam will stand as another great monument to the constructive genius of the American people. We are building for the future seen in the Valley of the Sacramento, when the huge reservoir, furnishing a plentiful supply of irrigating water the year round, will turn the waste areas into fertile, prosperous farmlands, abundantly supplied with electric power and light from the dam's hydroelectric turbines. And never again will the peaceful countryside be at the mercy of devastating floods. We Americans may be well proud of our Shasta Dam project, and DuPont chemists are proud of the part they have had in its construction, which is another realization of the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. And now the cavalcade of Americans historian, Dr. Frank Monahan of Yale University. History often seems to be a great web of individual biographies. Their proper presentation makes the past more intelligible and real. I know it is perfectly natural that in the building of America, the life stories of men of action should predominate. But they certainly should not obscure the contributions of men of ideas. Next week, Cavalcade will present the story of John Fitch, a neglected, eccentric Don Quixote, who invented the steamboat years before Robert Fulton's Claremont ever stirred the waters of the Hudson. The idea developed by Fitch was more important than many of the exploits of our generals and the deliberations of our statesmen. Fitch was a man of ideas, and one of these ideas was basic in the ultimate transformation of America. Yet he gained only loneliness and poverty, and finally an unknown and unmarked grave. Next week, the Cavalcade of America presents the story of John Fitch. At that time, our guest star will be the noted American actor, Thomas Mitchell, in his first radio appearance since winning an award from the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences for his performance in Stagecoach. On tonight's program, the orchestra and musical effects were under the direction of Don Voorhees. This is Basil Rysdale saying good night and best wishes from DuPont. National Broadcasting Company.